Hands down, this is the most engaging early finisher tasks I've ever implemented. Welcome to Talk and Chalk. This is the third installment in my back to school series for 2019. Thank you if you've been with me for a while and welcome if you're brand new. I'm an assistant principal in Southwest Sydney and this channel is just about sharing and collaborating with other teachers. I don't spam, uh, I don't sell anything and the channel isn't monetized so I don't make any money from it. I just want to make sure that we're the best teachers that we can be. Today I'm going to share with you the student contract. And when I say student contract, this is not a behavior related thing. This is uh, like a mini project. And the contract is that you, I guess, will adhere to the guidelines in it. I started doing this, I want to say 2005. I think it was that year. I think it was the first year that I had year six that I started doing this. And from memory, it was a team thing that we did. If my mentor is watching, correct me if I'm wrong. Did we do this together in that first year of year six? I can't remember. Also, side note. One of the best teams I've ever worked with. Uh, <laughs> I miss you guys. So what is involved in this is that the kids get a book that they cover and up to you, whatever cover you want to use and how you do that, obviously. Uh, the idea is that this is very much student owned. So the tasks that they're set, I make sure that when I set those tasks, they're achievable in some way throughout the list. So the kids will do a con uh, contract title page and they're allowed to use this book in whatever way, shape or form they want to do it. If they want to do the work on bits of paper elsewhere and stick it in, they can do that. If they want to um, use craft activities or whatever and pop it in there or create something separate and put a note in there for me saying, please see blah <laughs> for whatever it is they've made, then they can do that. So they get this little bit of paper which has the tasks on it and it has a point system down the side so this is the total score you could get for that task and they're not always worth the same and then at the bottom there's a spot for me to make a comment put a date and give them a final score out of that contract now because this was year six obviously I wanted something a bit more long term they're all thematic and they get given a due date so this one was Friday of week 10 that was when it was due so this is in class early finisher time that they had this and this is great because there are always those times throughout the day well not every single day obviously but things will come up where you'll go crap I, I need them to do something for 10 minutes and I don't want them to just play games so you know it's school photo day and you had your class ready at 10 o'clock for their 10 o'clock timeline and one of the runners comes and says to you it's gonna be 20 more minutes it's fine everyone go get out their contracts let's work on our contracts they get to choose the order that they work in which means that those kids that are overwhelmed by some of those activities can warm up by picking the easier ones. Yes, there's easier ones, there's more difficult ones. In our way, it's, you know, it's our way of differentiating for those kids that might be struggling. And this is not necessarily for them to go away and do what I'm never ever going to help them with it. Um, if a child chooses to do this at a particular time and ask me a question about it, of course I'm going to help them with it. So this first one that I had here, the theme was Australian animals. I usually tried to tie it in with something that we were learning in, in that term. And from memory, we were doing rainforests this term. Uh, the word rainforest is in here, so that must be right. So uh, in this, uh, you can see some are only worth five points, some are 10, some are 15. So the five point ones are sort of shorter, simpler tasks. So survey for friends, ask them to name their five favorite Australian animals. Another 5.1 was an acrostic poem using the word echidna. Another 5.1 was um, a platypus named Peter needs a home. List 10 reasons why you would be the best person to care for it. Uh, a 10.1 was on a double page design an illustration that includes Australian animals which live in water. On the other side will be Australian animals which live on land. Label your work. Uh, another one that was 10 points was list 10 books related to Australian animals, include the author and illustrators too. So sometimes you find the kids saying, can I take my contract with me to library today? And if they finish their work early in library, then they could work on it in that time. Library was also open at lunchtime. So some of the kids utilize that time to go utilize the library, or we had a reading corner in the classroom that could use that as well. 15.1. Uh, Design an advertisement for a new new Australian zoo that will be opening soon. Include name, address, cost, when it opens, closes. Does it have a canteen? What is so special about your zoo? Uh, and number 15, I like these ones. <laughs> Create your own Australian, Australian animal. You can use features of other animals. Uh, for example, a kangaroo tail, a wombat's head, a koala's habitat, a possum's body. List 10 things your animal can do and give it a name. 
those kind of open tasks where you say to your kids, you can make anything you want. It can be gross. It can be scary. It can be funny. Up to you. And then I would give them some good feedback on it when they went through it. So this is just an example of this student's Australian Animals contract. And I'm pretty sure that one of the lovely young teachers that's recently been in contact with me, who I taught, is friends with this person. I won't say the name, but if that person recognizes their book, hey, I still love the fact that I've got this. And the reason I know too that kids love this is at the end of the year, um, there would often be times where kids would have multiple books of things and I'd ask if I could keep them one for a keepsake, another one was for records. And any time I asked for a contract, the kids would say no. They all wanted to keep their contracts. This I was very lucky that this student was happy to hand over this particular book because she had other books as well. So uh, that's the title page for Australian Animals. These were the five favourite Australian animals. So you can see she interviewed one friend here, one friend here, one friend here, one friend here. This is where you'll see the differences in your students straight away in term one because there will be kids that will just list and not utilize the opportunity to create a design for it. Um, and then you'll see the ones that will spend way too much time designing something and just getting that balance. And it's good to see that, that dialogue happening between the kids about what they want to do and what they don't want to do and how they get creative in something. Um, this was a recount about Kangaroo Creek. Um, this is the Aussie Zoo. So this was the new zoo that she designed. So this was the Australian animals, water animals, and then land animals. So cute. The acrostic poem. Uh, this was creating the new animal. So this is the po po Poanga Tia Owala. Poang oh, God, I'm never going to remember how that was pronounced. But it climbs trees. It jumps up to 20 meters. It stays underwater for more than five minutes. It has a good sense of smell. Picks its own food. Digs holes. Identifies... Um, sound made from something, dives up to five meters and cleans itself. Cute animal. Where's the koalas? So you have to find the koalas in there. And I remember one was hidden down here, the koala. That was a good one because the kids would swap books and then try and find each other's koalas. Uh, Peter the platypus, reasons why, that was the 10 reasons why that would be the, you'll be the best person to care for them. Australian books. And then that was the end of that contract. So I would go through and I'd give them a mark out of that one and out of, I can't remember what the total was of this. I've, I refined it over the years now where I've got the total out of whatever it was. So you got 79 out for that one. But I mean, as you go through the book, this one is about television. They're not all the same tasks. There's different tasks on there. Um, and I'm giving you examples of these as well. So television. This was favorite TV shows. Um, this was interviewing four people about their favorite shows. And I love the different design there. She didn't do the same thing, did something different. This was creating an underwater television. This is watching too much TV is bad for you. So we're looking at a persuasive text there. Um, writing a postcard to the TV station or a letter to the TV station, doing a collage. This is great. And after seeing some of this, the um, cutting out skills of our senior students recently, I highly advocate that we are doing more cutting in our senior years. It's, it's not a skill that's going to become obsolete. We need to use our fingers for things. If we want our kids to be able to fix things in their homes, they need to be able to use their fingers properly. And cutting is a good way to do that. Sorry, side sidetrack there. Uh, advertisements, uh, a coming soon TV show creating a different TV, another letter, uh, and then and now TVs, uh, and then we get to the next one. So the next contract, this was a winter one. Uh, oh, this was great. Oh, I don't think this is the kid that did it though. Oh, there was a kid in this. It was a, a recipe writing for hot chocolate. What is it? Where is it? Uh, write a procedure how to make hot chocolate. And one of the kids in the class made this like paper contraption that stuck onto the paper and then put like a spoon inside it with a little like um i don't know paper bit at the bottom so you could move it back and forth and stir the chocolate oh they got so creative it was really cool either way winter uh this was interviewing people about their favorite winter foods a winter acrostic puzzle uh 
how to make hot chocolate. Look at that. Look at the design that's coming out there. Um, uh, this was a, a home. How, no, this was identifying the points of heat in your own home. So mapping skills on there and looking at um, reference points. Uh, creating winter clothes. You know, all this stuff tied in with stuff that we were learning. Um, heaters. This was charting the temperature over the course of the contract. So that was the calendar and what the, the temperature was, minimum, maximum location. Uh, information report about Parisha Blue. Another collage. Winter things. And this is where she started her music contract, but this is where she ran out of space and started another book. So um, that one was on there. Um, I, for the life of me, I can't find the digital versions of these particular contracts, so I'm happy to take pictures of that um, and put it into the Google Drive. But the Google Drive, I'm going to show you now. I'm going to give you four contracts, editable, so you can do whatever you want with them. So let's have a look at what I've got for you. So in the drive, it just starts off with like instructions on what you might need to be able to do them. So the first one we've got here is animals, not necessarily Australian. It could be any animals on there. So that one's kind of very similar to the, um, oh, these are the same. Oh, sorry, no, these are different. So the first two are the same. So television, and then there's a sport contract. This should look like it's in the proper format when you open it up in Word. I don't know what Google Docs is doing. So there's a sport one, you know, things like create a new um, sport for school, um, design the ultimate sports shed, uh, a letter to the principal about your favorite thing during sport this year. Um, and you can see I've added in there points for a title page and I've added points in there for neatness and presentation and a free choice activity as well. And sometimes they just come up with the coolest things for free choice. Um, and let's just keep going. And the last one is a summer contract. So that one, that one's got like write a recipe for the perfect summer snack, um, create a summer theme park, um, information report on summer in your local area, type of clothing that's good for summer, double page, draw a cartoon about something you could do in summer. So, you know, those kinds of things help those kids that may be a bit overwhelmed with literacy and everything, at least this way they can draw and, and do something, you know, that, that suits them. So if you saw on there, there is a minimum point expectation that I have, and it says on those ones, you must achieve at least a minimum of 50 points. So the whole idea is setting up that expectation that, you know, doing a, a, two activities is not your best effort necessarily. Um, and you know your kids, you know whether you're pushing them too hard or if they're getting it too easy or not. That expectation that this is actually yours to work on. This is your little mini project. Make it your own thing. Do your own designs. Use, oh, as soon as you tell kids you can use textures, it's like opening the magical vortex of things that you can do because you know that other times they're just so restricted on the things that they can use so giving them that ownership over what they get to do in that book just gives them a lot more free range and once you do one of those contracts over one term you'll get a feel for whether it's too quick too easy too long too hard um or whether or not they're actually enjoying the activities and like I said, in year six, with that whole cutting thing, they really liked the collage activities because they love looking in magazines. They're not just sitting there finding something, cutting it out and slapping it in. Half the time they spent 15 minutes reading through the magazine and it could have been completely unrelated. I don't care. They're reading. They're engaging in a different text. That's what I want to see my kids doing. The fact that they would um, collaborate and talk and give each other ideas or yell out across the room, who was looking for the red dress? You were... Okay, here, share, turn, take, all of that sort of thing that you want to see going on in your classroom. So I've used contracts um, from year three to year six, and I used kind of a modified version with a year two class. Um, they did it. They, I'm not sure if they quite took on the ownership as much as the older kids did, but I mean, it was a task that was always related to something we were doing in the classroom anyway. So I'd like to think it reinforced what we were doing. Um, and like I said, there's always those random moments where there's that, um, that early finisher time. There will be kids, those kids, I know there's people sitting there going, I have, I have this one kid that never finishes early, ever. That's fine. You can allocate time for this. You know, that Friday afternoon that assembly got cancelled or sport got rained out or whatever. Let's pick up our contracts and do our contracts. Little Johnny is always struggling to get this done. I'm going to sit down and help Johnny. Who wants to buddy up and work with a partner today and do that sort of a thing? There's always going to be those opportunities if you find them. 
Um, so, I mean, if this is something you want to implement, I'm sure you'll find a way to do that. And if you're stuck on anything, please send me a message. I'm happy to chat about the different ways that I've done it in the past as well. If you do something similar to this, I'd love you to pop it in the comments below and tell all the other teachers that are watching, you know, what kind of things that you do in your classroom, um, whether it's mini contracts or you might do guided inquiry, you might do genius hour or something like that. Um, please share it below so that everyone can share in those ideas and, um, and get something out of this experience of sharing together. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave it there though. So as usual, I'm going to put my subscription button below. If you haven't subscribed yet, just hover over that, click to subscribe. I'm going to put my other back to school series from last year, year before, whatever it was, up the top there so you can have a look at that as well. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye.